Design tables can be an extremely efficient way to create configurations of parts and assemblies. In this lesson, we'll be focusing on using design tables with parts, but we'll cover assembly design tables in another lesson. A design table is an embedded Excel worksheet that is saved with a model. This means that you need to have Microsoft Excel installed on your computer to take advantage of them. But they provide you with the power and functionality of Microsoft Excel to configure things like dimensions and feature suppression, to name a few, so that you can create entire families of a design quickly and easily. In this lesson, I'll walk you through the process of creating a design table using this socket model here. I'll create one family of six point sockets and another family of 12 point sockets of various sizes by configuring dimensions and then suppressing a feature all using a design table. I'll be using a design table to create an entire family of components that are based off of this initial design. Since I'll be using a design table to do this, it's important to go over some details of the way this part was created and discuss some design intent. I'll also perform a few steps that will make it easier to identify and control the specific dimensions and features that I'll be working with in the table. To get started, I'll use the rollback bar to show you how the part was built. It was started using a simple extruded boss based off of this sketch. Next, a hexagonal cut was made. And if I take a look at the sketch here, when I click on this dimension, Notice in the property manager, it has been given a name of across flats. Typically, as you create dimensions in SolidWorks, they're automatically given names such as D7 at sketch nine and so on. This is one of the dimensions that I plan to configure using the design table. Since I'll be looking at the Microsoft Excel interface to configure items, renaming dimensions like you see here can be extremely helpful for identifying what a dimension does compared with something like D7 at sketch 9. I could rename the dimension here if I wanted to, but I will leave it as is. I also want to point out some design intent around the way this part was modeled. If I change this value from 0.5 to 0.625, notice the wall thickness changed and is now much thinner than it was before. There is currently no relationship between the hex cut and the diameter of the first cylindrical extrusion. If I were to make the hex cut one inch, it would actually extend beyond the diameter of the first extrusion. I'll set this value back to 0.5. This design intent is obviously a very important consideration since I will be using a table to configure this dimension to drive other socket sizes. That said, I will be able to address this inside the design table by using a formula in Excel to ensure that the outer diameter remains a constant wall thickness based on the hex cut. If I bring the rollback bar down one more step, here you can see that a circular pattern was used to create the 12 point version of the socket. This circular pattern replicated the geometry of the first hex cut by rotating it 30 degrees about the axis of the cylinder. Next, a cutout was added for the drive. And finally, a chamfer was added. Now that you have a better understanding about some of the features and design intent with this part, let's get started with creating a design table. If I switch over to the configuration manager, you can see that only the default configuration currently exists, but the design table that I'm about to create will add quite a few new configurations here. To insert a new design table, you can go to insert, tables, design table. In the property manager, there are a few options for how to create the design table. Auto create is typically the easiest way to create a design table. The auto create option generates a table from existing configurations, dimensions, and features. This is usually the easiest option, particularly if you're just getting started with design tables. The blank option creates a new blank design table where dimensions and features can be added to it manually. The from file option allows you to browse to an existing Excel document that is set up to function as a design table. SolidWorks is very particular about the format of the data in the table, so it is important to have a good understanding about how the table is structured if you use this option down the road. I'll be using the auto create option 
to have SOLIDWORKS do the formatting for me and have the table generated based on the existing default configuration dimensions and features. The Edit Control Group box lets you determine whether the table and model will be bidirectional. In other words, if you make a change to the model, the table will update automatically and vice versa. The other option to block model edits that would update the design table makes using the design table the only way to edit configured items. With this option enabled, you would not be able to manipulate dimensions that are included in the table from the SOLIDWORKS interface. It would have to be done from the table. I'll leave the default option to allow bidirectional changes. I'll skip over these options at the bottom for now so we can get started with the table. I'll click the green check and a pop-up appears prompting me to select the dimensions that I would like to add to this design table. In the previous video, remember how I showed you that the dimension that controlled the size of the hex cut was renamed to Across Flats? This makes the dimension much easier to identify in this list compared with, say, D1 at Sketch 17. For this example, this Across Flats dimension is one that I would like to configure using the design table, so I will select that one. I would also like to add the cylinder depth dimension, which will allow me to create a family of short sockets as well as a family of long sockets. So I will hold the control key down to select both items. Keep in mind, you can select as many or as few dimensions as you wish to configure in the table. My recommendation is to start simple. You can always add more dimensions and features to the table later. The cylinder diameter is also something that I would like to add to the table so that I can control the wall thickness of the part as the hex size changes. But I will skip this for now so I can show you how to add a dimension like this to the table manually in a moment. I'll click OK and the design table appears. Also, you've probably noticed that the SOLIDWORKS toolbars and command manager have been replaced with Microsoft Excel toolbars. In the table, the first row contains the title and the second row contains the properties, dimensions, and features that will be configured. The third row contains the first configuration. In this case, it contains the default configuration since I used the auto create option and next to it are the values for each of the parameters that are being controlled by the table. There are quite a few items that can be controlled with a design table. I won't go into all of them here. But in case you're interested, you can see a complete list in the SOLIDWORKS help file. For now, I'd like to show you how to add additional items to be configured. To get started, I'd like to add the circular pattern feature that was used to create the 12-point version of the socket. The suppression state of that feature will determine whether the socket is a 6-point or 12-point version. To add that feature to the table, I can click in the next open cell in row 2. And to add the feature, I could either select it in the graphics area, or I can switch over to the Feature Manager tree to add it from here. To add the feature to the design table, I have to double-click on it. When I do, you can see that SOLIDWORKS adds some syntax to the table of State At and the name of the feature, 12 point. In the row for the default configuration, SOLIDWORKS automatically adds the state of this feature as unsuppressed. So, how about the cylinder diameter dimension I mentioned a moment ago? You saw how double-clicking the pattern feature added it to the table, but in this case, the cylinder diameter dimension isn't showing for me to click on. To make it visible, I can right-click on the Annotations folder in the Feature Manager tree and select Show Feature Dimensions. This makes all of the dimensions appear in the Graphics window. To add the diameter dimension to the table, I can select the next open cell in row 2 and double-click on the dimension that I wish to add. Right away, the dimension is added to the table, along with its corresponding value in the default configuration. If you wish to reorder the columns, you can do this in the same manner as you would expect in Microsoft Excel. At this point, the table contains all of the dimensions and features that I plan on configuring with the design table. All that's left is in entering the names of all the new configurations and adjusting the values for these parameters in each one. This default configuration represents the model in what I will call 0.5 short 12. 0.5 is the size of the hex, 1 is the short length, and this is a 12-point socket since the pattern feature is unsuppressed. 
I'll copy and paste this entire row into the next two rows to create the next two configurations. I'll name this next configuration 0.625 short 12. And the next one will be called 0.75 short 12. The primary difference between these configurations and the first configuration is the across flats dimensions that controls the size of the hex cut. So I'll enter the corresponding values. All of the formatting functionality you would expect with Excel applies here. So you can resize columns or any other formatting you wish. Now, as I showed you at the beginning of this lesson, if the hex size changes, I need to consider the wall thickness of the socket. Right now, you can see that the original configuration, which has an across flats value of 0.5, has a cylinder diameter of 0.75. I would like to maintain this 0.25 wall thickness for each of the configurations. To do this, I will use a simple formula in Excel to ensure this is the case. In the cylinder diameter column, I'll go ahead and click into the cell with the 0.75 value. And to use a formula, I will type equals and click into the across flat cell to add it to the formula and type plus 0.25. When I press enter on the keyboard, the value stays the same. But if I click again on this cell, you can see that the formula is now being used to drive this value based on the across flats value. To repeat this formula in the cells below it, I can click on the cell handle and drag it down into the cells below. And you can see the value updates based on the corresponding across flats dimension for each configuration. Next, I'd like to add the six point version of these same socket sizes. To do this easily, I can copy and paste the existing cells and make adjustments from there. Since these will be six point sockets, I'll start by renaming the configurations replacing the 12 with a 6. As I mentioned, what makes these 6-point sockets different from the 12-point versions is the suppression state of the pattern feature. I will need to suppress this pattern feature in the 6-point versions. To do this, I can type in the word suppressed. But as a shortcut, SOLIDWORKS also recognizes the letters S for suppressed and U for unsuppressed, so an S will suffice for indicating that the pattern is suppressed in the 6-point versions. I mentioned that I also wanted to create a family of these that represent a long version of the same sockets. With much of the information already typed into the table, creating this additional family is pretty painless. I'll just copy and paste all of the existing configurations And I'll rename each of these from short to long. Once each of the configurations are named correctly, all that's left is to adjust the dimension value for the cylinder depth. I'll change this from 1 to 2 for the long configurations. At this point, I've created an entire family of parts based off of just one original part file in a matter of minutes. So let's take a look at the results. To get out of the design table and return to the normal SOLIDWORKS interface, all you have to do is click anywhere outside of the table. When I do, a pop-up appears prompting me that the new configurations have been added. I'll click OK to dismiss the message. On the Configuration Manager tab, you can see all of the configurations. Notice they have an Excel icon next to them indicating that they're being controlled by the design table. As I double-click on each configuration, you can see the results of the suppression of the pattern to get the six-point version the cylinder depth that affected the long and short version, 
as well as the different sizes that were driven using the across flats dimension. Some of the dimensions appear in magenta. This lets you know that these are being controlled by a design table. In case you ever open a file that someone else created and happen to see dimensions in this color, that's a good indicator that the dimensions are included in a design table, which may be a preferred method for editing. To get back into the design table, notice the tables folder at the top of the configuration manager. If I expand this, you can see the design table. When I right click on it, notice there are options to edit the feature or edit the table. If I click edit feature, this opens the property manager I showed you at the beginning of the lesson. If I instead click edit table, this brings me back to the design table, but first SolidWorks prompts me to choose whether I would like to add any configurations or parameters that have been added to the model since the table was last edited. From here, I can continue adding items to configure to the table if necessary. And when I proceed, the table once again appears where I can edit any of the existing configurations or add additional configurations.